adjustments, big marks in the exam. So we've looked at the technique I would like you to use. Open up required accounts, we've done that. We've read the question for about a minute or so. We are about to adjust for additional information. Before you start doing the information, dealing with information on page 79, points A, B, C, etc., may I suggest that you check your trial balance as we did before to make sure there aren't any loose ends. So this is another phase of the adjustments. In point A on the second page, it says staff costs are apportioned. Put a cross besides that to remind you to come back to it later. Overheads, a cross besides that, come back to that later. Point C, the buildings were acquired on the 1st of April 2007 with an estimated useful life of 40 years. So clearly there were no buildings additions during this year. Uh, in other words, after the start of the year. The buildings previously held having been sold at the end of last year. The depreciation is to be apportioned 80% production, 20% admin. So clearly two steps here. First, working out the depreciation figure and then splitting it, apportioning it. Separate marks for two very easy steps. The secret with these exams is to get the easy marks. It doesn't matter about the fancy marks. It's lovely to get 90, but a safe 55, 60 is what we're all aiming at. So point number C, buildings, depreciation. Try not to use too many abbreviations in the main answer, the income statement and financial position statement, but in your workings, please use abbreviations. Buildings depreciation in brackets, I'm going to say land is not depreciated. And that is IS 16, our next topic. The cost of the buildings in the trial balance on the previous page appears to be 800, debit side about three quarters of the way down the trial balance. So we have cost of 800. The life is 40 years. Therefore, the depreciation per annum is 20. That's the first step. Point C says apportionate. So let's do that. The production said to be 80% of 20 is clearly 16. Therefore, the admin must be 4. Quick check. Yes, no problem. It comes to 20. Later, it will be shown in the analysis of costs, as I'll demonstrate. So that's my part C done. Let's turn to our part D. Maybe before that, just a little idea from me. See what you think about this. In the last few seconds, we were heavily into depreciation and non-current assets. So we've got our income statement sorted. I just wonder whether it may be an idea to do the financial position view of depreciation here and now. While we're thinking about non-current assets, it's probably a good idea to sort that aspect out. So let's say upstairs, this item here was the income statement. Immediately downstairs, statement of financial position figures being worked out. Different layout styles people use, but here's one of them for non-current assets.
tangible. You've got your netbook value, or will have netbook value. Nearby, we could have our accumulated depreciation. And then a bit to the left, we could say cost. So we've got freehold land and buildings. The land appears to be 1,400. The buildings, a few minutes ago, stood at 800. The land is not depreciated, so the net book value is the same as cost. The buildings, we decided to take away 20 as per workings just now. And so the net book value is 780. So that's my freehold under control. It seems towards the end of this question, someone has done the depreciation because the net book value at the end of the year for things like plant and motor vehicles has been given to us. So we gratefully accept it, bring it into play as the next item, plant and machinery, MC, that's fine. 3520. Then you have your motor vehicles, which is 55. And then you have your fixtures, you see, 800. And because that's all there is, I'm going to add them up, those figures. Conveniently, we have a little line there. 6555 is our statement of financial position total. Just the one figure to come through onto the main financial statement. So that's our point C, more or less, done. We come to point D. Now, remember, many of these topics, like depreciation and tax, I will cover as proper standards over the next few hours, but in later chapters. But let me see if I can explain a few things about tax. If nothing else, it will open the door to the concept when we actually are doing tax in due course. So where are we with regard to this question? Let's say as for question point number D, we have tax. Now here's a little secret. Tax in real life, very detailed. Uh, ACCA have enough marks kept aside, a couple hundred marks for tax papers. So accounting for tax is very easy. How easy? Three items. The whole of tax boils down to just three items. They stand for C, U, D. Corporation tax, under or over provision for previous year's tax, and D for deferred tax. So allow me to put those, uh, that little mnemonic down. C, leave a line, U, leave a line, D. CUD. So the C in this question, it says the estimate of 4.2 million provided for corporation tax payable on the profits of the previous year, please underline previous year, was agreed at 4.320. And this was paid on the due date. Now, hold on a second. If you've provided 4.2 million and you've actually paid 4.32 million, would you agree the excess that you've paid was an under provision last year? So that under provision is 120. I might write that in near my 4320. Just pull out a little line and say 120 under provided. So what is this? At the end of every year, you make a, an estimate of how much you're going to pay. After discussion with the tax authorities, it is quite possible that you might have won the argument, you might have lost the argument. Here, of course, the company has lost the argument. They thought they had to pay 4,200 in thousands, but they actually did have to pay 4,320 in thousands. So 120 is under provided. Since we've established that figure, 
let's bank our mark by putting it down on paper under provision for previous year and if you can save 4320 take away 4200 that'd be marvelous 120 always one mark in the exam what else is there the taxation on profits for the current year is estimated at 3 million which is obviously the corporation tax for this year sometimes called income tax because in some parts of the world the local authority tax is called corporation tax so more popularly known as income tax but be careful the examiner will sometimes use the word corporation tax we then come to deferred tax very simple concept actually the deferred tax at the year end is said to be two million two thousand and thousands if you come quickly to the trial balance on the previous page you'll find yourself with one two five oh as the deferred tax balance about the fifth item on the debit side, I beg your pardon, fifth item on the credit side of your trial balance. If you come back to the previous page, there's a 1250, fifth item on the credit side of your trial balance on the front page. If 1250 is the opening balance and 2000 is the closing balance required, what's the difference? it is that difference that we must charge to our income statement 2000 take away 1250 should we call that 750 it is that 750 I'm going to bring in here as the deferred tax transfer and if you added that up 3870 it is and that indeed is the income statement figure now rather like we did with our non-current assets earlier once you've established the income statement aspect of these problems why not do the financial position in other words the balance sheet aspect and it is that style of approach I'm going to be using so here we are this is the statement of financial position that was a minute ago the income statement the statement of financial position dominated by deferred tax remember deferred tax a special IAS on its own I'll cover that in due course the bulk of IAS 12 is deferred tax but let me see if I can explain something without facing the huge concept itself this might be the only level at which it comes up what is the opening balance 1250 what's the closing balance 2000 how much to charge to make the 1250 into 2000 750 and that indeed is what I'm about to show you so you have the opening in the trial balance TB means trial balance 1250 these are credits if you leave a couple of lines and close it off the closing is given as 2000 clearly the difference is 750 and that indeed is the income statement transfer you will have recognized of course that this 750 is nothing but the same 750 higher up the page so if I just link that up with an arrow at least as we're studying it we can see that if you charge your income statement with 750 you credit it so you debit your income statement and you credit your deferred tax that's how the system goes so to recap if if the opening balance is a 1250 credit and your closing is a 2000 credit the middle bit here must also be a credit So to conclude this area of tax, 
What I'd like to do, if you'll allow me, is to take you back to F3, foundation level, in case you were exempted, quickly brushing up on that. You're going to have to debit your income statement with 750 and credit your deferred tax in the balance sheet, the financial position, 750. It is that credit that's crucial. So, that's our point D done. The CUD in total, the CUD in total, the CUD total, is what goes to the income statement. Notice the balance sheet is quite different, financial position situation. Point E, on the second page there, inventory is 399. I put a cross beside it. That's obviously closing inventory from the date. And the debentures are redeemable in two equal annual installments commencing on that date. So would you kindly, on the face of your point F on your question paper, divide the 3,000 from the trial balance, come along to the trial balance, third item near the top on the credit side, pick up that 3,000, bring it back to the second page, onto point F, and just divide the 3,000 by 2, and say 1,500 is a current liability. Now, entirely optional, I'll leave this decision to you to see whether it's worth spending time in the exam doing this, but I'm going to do it in class, take the liberty. What I was saying was the debentures are 3,000. And because they are in two equal installments, I suppose one could say 1,500 and 1,500 is the split. The one on the far left is a current liability. The one on the far right is a non-current liability. Current liabilities are payable within one year, the first 1,500, and the other 1,500 therefore becomes payable after one year. We've therefore come to the end of our adjustments. If I can just take you back to our technique to show you where we're at. Allow me just to flick back for a few seconds. We've done our depreciation, done our tax, all the big mark earning points. We are, we've just about done our adjustments as well, so I'll tick off the adjustments. And just before we do our line by line solving, I invite you to think about something called analysis of costs, one of Steve Scott, the examiner's favorite uh, workings. Get this right, and your income statement is within your grasp, almost perfection. Obviously, you have to write it out still. So let me take that one step, because in a matter of minutes, we're going to have to face that step anyway. So let's do it now. Now, first things first. You need about, what shall we say, 12 lines, so be careful. Here we are, analysis of costs. Dollar signs, the final major working before we get lost through ourselves into the final accounts. If we need to do any additional workings, we'll come back. But this is a major working. Three columns, cost of sales, distribution, and admin. As I say, use abbreviations in your workings, but in your main answer for published accounts, try to keep working, try to keep abbreviations to the minimum. So here we are, the opening inventory, raw materials in the trial balance, raw materials towards the end of the trial balance appears to be 950. Finished goods, FG, 2970. Raw material purchases, 
third item on the debit side of your trial balance, debit side, 12,250. Add it up if you wish, 16,170 less closing inventory. Now someone's done this for us. It says 3990. So I assume that's raw materials and finished goods. And so that's 3990. And so the running total is 12,180. Using a calculator, absolutely no problem. Now, you might wonder where I got this uh, 3990 from. Basically, point E of the question on the second page. Let's march on to the next challenge, the next source of marks. Clearly, I've got to do something with my staff costs. You will remember us keeping it aside earlier with the little cross. So back we go to point A. It says 7 is to 1 is to 2. So I'm going to write that down. 7 is to 1 is to 2. And the total figure for staff costs is given as 15,600. So in my trial balance, I notice there's a 15,600, which we're then going to have to split. Be careful. 15,600... 7 is to 1 is to 2. 7 and 1, 8 into 10. So that's 1 tenth. So the middle figure is the easiest one to do. 1 tenth of 15,600 is 1560. Doubling that up, you have 3120. And 7 times 1560, obviously, is 10,920, using a calculator, preferably. And so we move on. Please excuse that line. We have overheads given in point B, self-explanatory, 19,200, 6,360, I beg your pardon, 6,310, and 2080. Finally, you will recall some depreciation, one of our main workings. Point C, 16 production and 4 for admin. Be careful of that. Watch your zeros is all I can say. It's very easy to call that 16,000. Forgetting, of course, that these are in thousands anyway. And imagine what a difference that will make to your answer. You might even create a loss for your company. And that's not a good thing because of a few extra zeros. So here we are. Let's add it all up. The far left is 42,316. The one in the middle is 7870. And then 5204. So all of this goes to the income statement. Can I suggest that you now start your income statement and then do the statement of financial position? So, back we go to our earlier page, the income statement itself. Would you make a start, please? Can I advise you to keep an eye on your previous page, that is to say, your formats? The examiner is fairly relaxed about the exact terminology, but where possible, I'd advise using... Uh, words that are similar, but most of all the order is important, especially for the key items. So where are we? Let's go back to our income statement, make a start on things like revenue, 66,980, pick it up from the trial balance, about half a dozen items down the credit side. 
So once your revenue is in place, pick up your cost of sales from the working we just did. That gives you your gross profit. From that you'll deduct obviously your distribution and admin. So can you just run ahead and make a start please? Here we are. Let me catch up with you. We'll start with revenue, which is 66980 less cost of sales, which we did just now through our workings, 42316 24,664 gross profit. Plenty of marks for that, but as you suspect, the main marks are for the cost of sales. Uh, can I suggest as well, if you are a little bit unsure, a bit rusty about basic accounting, as you pick items up from your trial balance, I invite you to consider ticking them off so that you do not, by mistake, bring them in again. Also, it give you some encouragement when you're doing your balance sheet to see most of the items, or at least half the items, ticked off because you've used them in the income statement. Just a suggestion. So we've ticked off, certainly, the revenue. And earlier, when we used items for our cost of sales and analysis of costs, we would have ticked a few more items off less distribution costs, which is 7870 from that big working analysis of costs, and of course your administrative expenses. Which is 5204. All these come from those workings we were doing a few minutes ago. Adding that up, you come to 13,074 and of course 11,590 which is the profit from operations. Soon after gross profit and indeed these profits from operations, it may be an idea to bring in some interest received, either just below gross profit or here. The examiner is fairly flexible because different uh, regimes do it differently. So let's say add interest received. And that's 60. So the order doesn't matter so much at this stage, lower down the format. Then you have your finance costs, which if you remember, the interest paid was 850 That 850 includes the debenture interest of 300, so that's fine. But you will remember the preference share capital is redeemable. And because 75 has been paid, the other 75 now needs to be paid. The interest paid does not include the interim preference dividend because that's separated in the trial balance. It is this item I'm now bringing in. Preference, it's a working, so abbreviations are fine especially since it's in brackets. Preference dividend, the amount that was paid is 75, but the other 75, which is accrued, payable, that needs to come in. So that is 150.
And so if you add those together, you're looking at 1,850 plus 150. So that's a new development. Preference dividends, if it's a redeemable preference share capital, of course, it must be shown as if it's finance costs, like interest. Adding all that up, we find ourselves with 10,650. You will notice 11,590 plus 60. This should be in brackets, deduction less. 10,650, profit before tax. Beyond that, of course, you have tax made up basically of the cud mnemonic. At this stage, all you can say is, look, examiner, in my workings, I've got a figure of 3870. I hope it's right. That's what I believe to be the answer. 6780 is profit after tax for financial year. Dividends, ordinary dividends, if any, must not be shown on the face of your income statement anymore. So let's put that to one side. Let's pick up finally the balance sheet or financial position as it's strictly called these days. And there are some more workings attaching to that, so we must keep some time aside for that. So, it is to our balance sheet, the financial position, that we turn our attentions next. They're slightly stricter with the terminology and the order of the balance sheet. Uh, the income statement is fairly relaxed once you get to your gross profit. Beyond that, it doesn't matter so much. But the balance sheet is a little bit more formal. Statement of financial position. Assets. We'll start with our non-current assets. Aren't you glad we've done that working with a ready-made figure of 6555 to bring through? So I'll say tangible 6555. You see, at this stage in the exam, you're a little bit rushed for time. You're fighting the clock. What you don't want to have to do is to go back to your depreciation calculations for income statement purposes and try to work out how that fits into a financial position uh, view. So do, do the income statement and the SFP aspects in your workings, one after the other. So at this stage, you can pick up a figure, drop it in, and you, it just takes a few seconds. The next thing, of course, is our investments. I noticed there were some investments here. Indeed, 800. Write that in, about there. A little uh, rule with accounting. The further to the left the description is, the more important. The further to the right, the less important. So, for example, assets is the big first half of the balance sheet, income, the uh, statement of financial position. Then you have your non-current assets as a bit of a subheading. And below that, you have further subheadings like tangible and, invest and investments. So the further to the left they are, the more important. The further to the right they are, the slightly less important. Do remember that. Uh, sometimes described as marshalling assets, a traditional accounting phrase. So equally to the left, as we showed our non-current assets, we now show current assets. Inventory, which is closing always, don't forget, 3990. Might put in a little dollar sign near the top, make it look a bit smarter. So two levels of figures, two lots of dollar signs. Then you have your trade receivables, 
29,290. You then have your bank, 2460. Consider how seriously wrong you'd be if you were to show the debit balance on the bank as an overdraft. That would be wrong because, of course, it is an asset. Debits are assets, assets are debits. Then you have your prepayments, already reflected in expenses, one imagines. So that's 880 and 36,620, the running total of all those current assets, which give us a grand total of 43,000. 975. That is total assets. Now, of all topics, published accounts has got to appear to be a little bit more formal because published accounts are simply the large uh, company accounts that uh, is published for stakeholders, shareholders, investors, banks, anyone interested, employees, anyone who has a stake in the company. So that's the top half of the balance sheet done. Hopefully we can get a figure in the second half of the balance sheet that's close to that within the time. So equity and liabilities. Ordinary share capital. One dollar shares. Six thousand. Then you have your reserves. Careful. I notice that the opening balance accumulated profit about the fourth item from the top, 5835, is what was brought forward from the previous year. Plus, we had obviously a balance for the current year. So, accumulated profits. If I were to say opening 5835, where did I get that from? About the fourth item on the credit side from the top of your trial balance. Plus, the current year is 6780, something we got in our income statement. So this is 12,615. If you want to do a subtotal, 18,615. Lower down the page, we have our non-current liabilities. I would suggest doing that as a separate item on its own. And below that, of course, current liabilities. The examiner doesn't mind where you show that, but my suggestion would be to do it in workings. Several reasons for that. Number one, obviously, is if you do it off the balance sheet, if you make a mistake, no one can see the uh, mess you may be in, your balance sheet still looks very professional. Uh, the other reason, of course, it enables you to get your balance sheet done within one page. The detail is on a separate page. One figure comes forward. And the third reason, of course, is the examiner does that more often than not. Though he doesn't mind. If you want to show everything on the face of your balance sheet, absolutely fine, especially in this area. Okay, so that's our, hopefully, total equity and liabilities in due course. Let's see. I'm now moving into our last page of our workings to see what we can come up with. I'll start with the current liabilities 
and then we'll move to our non-current. The current liabilities, the order doesn't matter, it's only a working. Trade payables, 13,760. Last item on the credit side of your trial balance. Then you have your accruals alongside prepayments and the accruals appear to be 1250 to be found in the trial balance immediately above the trade payables in this question but be prepared to look around. Then you have your accrued preference dividend and this is the second half of the year. You know the bit that wasn't paid, be careful, that's 75. Um, do be careful of what we mean by the statement of financial position, current liabilities. Liabilities is something that has to be paid. A liability has to be paid. So if 150 represents the whole year, the 150 of course goes to the income statement. But if 75 out of the 150 has been paid, that's the end of the matter. You mustn't show that first 75 as payable because that will be double counting. It's only the second 75 that remains payable as at the year end. Please be careful of that. You then have your tax HMRC revenue and customs VAT which is a bit like sales tax 65 the pay as you earn and national insurance contributions 210 the company will pay that on behalf of his employees and then we have tax this is to say corporation tax if you remember we had our old friend CUD but it is only the C that comes through to be shown only the corporation tax. These two, the under and over, I beg your pardon, the under, over and the deferred tax um, have been ironed out, or at least the under, and, uh, under provision has been ironed out in the income statement, that's the end of the matter. As far as the deferred tax is concerned, that will be shown as non-current liabilities. So what appears in the income statement, the total of the card, is not the same as what appears in the balance sheet. Do be careful. And then finally, quite a long current liabilities list, we have the 10% debentures. That is to say the 3,000 divided by 2, 1,500. That's the first half, of course. Have a look at point number F of the question as indeed we did some workings. Have a look at the workings. If you add this up you come to 19,860 and that goes into your SFP Statement of Financial Position. You can see why that's quite a few marks. Occasionally six marks in the exam. Just to conclude matters let's turn our attentions to the non-current liabilities to see if we can balance this thing. We'll start with the redeemable preference share capital 2000. Underline the word redeemable. Re redeemable implies it's a liability. It ought to be paid. That is, to say, that is to say, if I invest in you, the company, you must repay it to me at some stage in the future. Always assume it's long term, it's more than one year away, unless told otherwise. Then you have your 10% debentures, 3,000 divide by 2, you can check that dividing by 2 years from the dates when it's going to be repaid, 2009, 2010, and obviously we've got a 2008 year end. So this is the second half.
The first half was current liabilities, of course. And then as you add it all up, let's not forget deferred tax. Deferred tax, extra tax kept aside is always the closing balance, 2,000. And so if you add it all up, you come to 5,500, and that goes to your SFP. Just write that a bit more clearly. Beg your pardon. Let us now go back to the balance sheet, the statement of financial position, to see whether we are close to balancing. I wonder if I can take you back here. Here we are. The figures then that we just worked out, 5,500 and 19,860. The grand total, of course, 43,000. 975. I wonder if that balances. It does. Don't forget, if you balance your balance sheet, you've got 100%. In fact, occasionally they have a few extra marks on these questions, so you'll get at least 100%. So your obsession shouldn't be with balancing the balance sheet, the statement of financial position, but to sticking to your time, 45 minutes. The one negative with regard to published accounts is that it's so long. It's not difficult, as you can see, but it is very, very long. So be structured. At any stage, if you run out of time, you're 45 minutes, whatever it might be in the exam, let it go, go on to the next question. The big thing is to show some technique and to show that you're on the right tracks. That concludes our coverage of published accounts. If you go back for one last minute to your technique, the O-R-A-L. We managed to balance that balance sheet because of two things. Number one, we had a plan of action. And number two, lots of exam questions by way of practice. Thank you.